Why implicit communication? Because it's hugely important, not only at a personal level, but at an international level, amongst diplomats, amongst businessmen, amongst any parties who are engaged in important communications. What is implicit communication? Well, it covers everything from ambiguity to allusion to connotations, implications, obviously, but presuppositions as well, frames of reference, implicit ways of framing and communicating things, everything that isn't explicit, but that is nevertheless created and constrained by the language we use. So in this workshop, we'll be focusing not on open silences or even on loaded silences, but on capsules of meaning that are generated by what we have said, but not fully explained. Now, why is this important? Well, largely because misunderstandings arise through implicit communication. We assume people have understood our meaning in fact, they've come away with a completely different meaning. So wouldn't it be better just to get rid of implicit communication? I think it's not going to be possible. Implicit communication is absolutely inherent to the way that our minds work and also to the way that we communicate with each other. For instance, we resort to implicit communication when we want to be tactful, to be very frank, straightforward, and in your face is often to be rude, and that would break down understanding between people. We also resort to implicit communication when we don't want to state our position too clearly. We want to keep our options open and buy ourselves room for manoeuvre. Occasionally, we resort to implicit communication when we want to be able to plausibly deny having said something. That is a huge advantage. But one of the most important reasons for resorting to implicit communication is to persuade others. It's much more efficient to be able to bring people to the conclusions we want them to reach and make them feel that they have reached them themselves than to tell them what to do. There is a definition of diplomacy as the art of letting others have your own way. Not getting them to, but letting them have your own way. So the way that we're going to structure this workshop is through a series of exercises looking at various types of implicit communication, from gaps, gaps between sentences, gaps between words, to stories in a capsule, the way that we often resort to metaphors, proverbs, or connotations even, in order to speak through pictures, a very effective way of speaking memorably and vividly. Um, we're also going to look at the indirect language of politeness, as well as hidden frames, frames such as you find in presuppositions and loaded questions. And it's this subject that is going to lead us to the final exercise of our workshop, in which we simulate a hard talk interview with participants uh, working in groups of three or four in order to discuss a controversial topic in which all the topics that we will have looked at in implicit communication will be used under the spotlight. In some ways, this workshop on implicit communication doesn't teach participants anything new. It aims primarily to bring to their awareness factors of language that they've been using, but that they haven't necessarily used consciously. And the great advantage of mastering implicit communication is that you are able to recognize it and to deploy it yourself, and therefore to prove a better craftsman at your trade, whatever that is, whether it's diplomacy, whether it's business, or whether it's simply effective everyday communication.